Section 11.1, .1, Sequences and Series. A sequence is a function. So remember, a function means that we have an input. We plug it into our function, and it gives us an output. If it's a sequence, our input, our domain, is going to be the natural numbers. So with this, we're going to plug in 1, and then 2, 3, 4, and so on. And that is always the domain of a sequence. If we have a finite sequence, that means that our sequence stops at some point, in which case we have the set of natural numbers from 1 until some value k. So perhaps I only want 10 terms in my sequence. That means I'll plug in the numbers 1 through 10. Or maybe I want 20 terms, so I'll plug in the numbers 1 through 20 as my inputs. We can follow that pattern and get as many terms as we want, but if it's a finite sequence, we will end at some point. All right, let's jump right into an example, the basics of a sequence. So here's a sequence, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. These are the outputs of your sequence. It means that when I plug in 1, I get out 1. If I plug in 2, I get out 2. 3 gives me 4, 5 gives me 8, and so on because this is my first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth, my fifth, and my sixth. And so as I was saying, each number up here is called a term. And we give it the notation a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. And we say that the sequence is a set of all numbers a sub n, such that n is a natural number. So we'll put this in a table to make it a little bit clearer. The subscripts on these A's tell us our input. It tells us what number term we're working with. So if it's the first term, I realize that in the sequence above, the output is 1, and so the term notation is A sub 1. The second term, A sub 2, I look above, I realize my second term is the value 2. And so the input on that was 2. My third term, a sub 3, the input is 3, the output is 4. My fourth term, we say, is a sub 4, the input is 4, the output is 8. Fifth term, a sub 5, the output is 16, and so on and so forth, until we get down to the nth term, where our input is n, and our output is whatever that nth term is. But using the example we saw above, we also see a pattern. We notice that to get from one term to the next, it seems that we are consistently multiplying by 2. This brings us to what we call the nth term formula. Basically, we can write a formula that will tell us what any given term is. So if we plug 1 into this formula, it will give us 1. If we plug 2 into this formula, it gives us 2. If we plug 3 into this formula, it will give us 4. If we plug in 4, it will give us 8. If we plug in 5, it gives us 16. Here's a hint. If you see continual repeated multiplication, the way we represent repeated multiplication is with an exponent. So we're saying we're raising 2 to some exponent. And for this one, we don't want to raise it to the n, because then that would give me 2. We're going to raise it to the n minus 1. So if I check this out, I realize, OK, a sub 1 is going to be 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 2 to the 0, which is 1. That checks out a sub 2 is 2 to the 2 minus 1 equals 2 to the 1 equals 2. That checks out. a sub 3 is 2 to the 3 minus 1, 2 squared equals 4. And this will continue to work for all of our terms, so this is the correct nth term formula.